spin up. You're saying, okay, I'm going to do this in F sharp minor. That's right. Whatever. So we just try to hear a melody in there, and through habit, through habituation. Yeah. From playing millions of exercises, and, you know, hundreds of little things. So you harmonize. You'll naturally add other voices if you're in the mood to. But I'm focused on the top line. Sometimes I'm focused on just the bass, and anything I'm adding above it is whatever I can get lucky with at that moment. For instance, if I'm now I'm starting to hear the top, and all my tension's going over to the melody in the top. I intended to keep it in the bass. I think of chords like there. I definitely think of the names of these chords. E minors, A7, D, G, and the cycle. It's like one minor, B minor, five, one seven, four, four minor, one minor, five of five, which is two, five. Those are only some options. I mean, uh, this could be different. You know, like this bass line implies quite a different feeling than when you're filling in all the half steps. Right. Plus. This thing doesn't always have to be A7 before the D. This could be A minor 7. This could be F sharp and not diminish. I like the, the, the three note uh, when it turns into that. Yeah. I mean, when I've got some loud layer side back. Yeah, sort of, me too. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know that. That's Bach's favorite. He wrote a lot of stuff in three voices. Somebody like you is the perfect person to hit me to that because I've had a lot of uh, sort of uh, stuffy classical teachers try to explain it, you know, and it's not quite the same. Bach loves three things the most, four, five, and one. He builds an arsenal of sound out of that. You, you, the um, one, four, five. Yeah, but two, four, so. five, one. It's oh, a, it's a trick. You're saying. If, you, if you organize it that way, sometimes you get closer to a lot of his approach harmony. His themes are clear cut. Many times his themes involve him stating something with a tonic, then going off into either a five or a four. And whichever one he didn't do, he'll come and get that pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with a stopover on the one in between. 
difference is to hear him go. just the scale. He'll change in there. He'll go somewhere else so that he doesn't have to go straight stepwise. But definitely his harmonies are real clear cut at the beginnings of his pieces. What happens is once he's established those, a lot of inner parts flow in approaching various tonics along the way. And in those you'll find his favorite progression is 4-5-1. It's just something he's just crazy about. You hear more of this sound. This sound. Yeah. That ascending line than just about any line in the bottom. In some fashion. It's a whole way, different way of, of hearing from me. It really it, is. If you hear first inversion, it'll do well for yourself as on the fours and fives. That's mm. his favorite. If you're going to study the harmony of harmony. Because what I'm doing, when I'm listening to, to a jazz piece or something like that, um, because sometimes it's not so contrapuntal, I'm so caught up in listening to the different lines that sometimes I'm not even really trying to think too much about what it is, I'm just listening to it, and, and I, I would like to get to the point where I'm more analytical and able to... Well, it's good that you're enjoying it, that's a good sign that you're at least enjoying it. Oh, most definitely. So when you hear this line for an A minor, and you hear it, even though that's six, seven, right. raise six, raise seven, one, right. that's also four, five, one, in the primal sense, the way sure. we're calling it. Seven. Seven. 